he was innocent. And so he was bringing a packed lunch one day, and he was going to this place where the, the, the brothers were tending the, the, the sheep or the, 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 the cattle. And they were not there, and, and she came, and then they had to go to Dolphin. And, and Joseph took time to go there just to bring lunch or a meal for, 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 for his brothers. You could see the, the, the characteristics of Joseph. But while he was there, as he was just, he did not even say a word. He did not even say a word. But when his brothers saw him, they said, let's kill this ambitious guy. They had those moments when you have not even spoken a word, but people don't, don't really like you. They want you. You know, they have that, they have that, probably some of us here had that. I had those moments. I have not even uttered a word, but just my mere presence, I was hated. And the response is up to me. So Joseph was thrown into the pit. And you know the story. He was sold into, the, into Potiphar's uh, household. He was tempted. But because he was faithful to God. He was not able. He, he, he did not allow himself to be, to be tempted by this wife of somebody else. He said I, I, can, I cannot do this. I cannot do this sin against God. I, I want to keep God's commandment. I want to get out of here. And so he left a lesson for us tonight. Friends. If you're in a in a situation where you are about to be tempted, like there are many temptations, like the, the disagreements is about to spark. The disagreements, and this is a piece of advice that I found out in, in reading the, uh, the accounts in Genesis chapter 37, 38, 39, 40. Joseph was 17 years old then. Leave. When there is a building out of disagreements or pressure, it's okay to leave. Rather than fuel the disagreements because small things, uh, big things began from the small, begin, uh, small beginnings and it will, it, we don't know what will happen. That's why there are so many domestic abuses in America that comes from a very simple disagreement. But the, the Bible says, flee. Avoid. When, when you're tempted to, to say something against your spouse or to your children, take a walk. This is not just a psychological uh, advice, but this is a biblical advice that there is no benefit for us to discuss and disagree because nobody will win. It's a lose-lose situation. Joseph left the presence of, of Potiphar's wife. He, he left because he doesn't want to be there. He doesn't want to see the, the seduction, the, 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 the preparation of, 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 of Potiphar's wife. I, I heard in some commentaries that Potiphar was... Potiphar's wife was beautiful and uh, uh, adorable. Just imagine. And Joseph was, the, was handsome. The Bible says he was handsome. It's just let us put it this way. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm not that uh, solid looking like, like Joseph. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but my mom would used to say, Magandang balaki ka. My mom would always say that, I remember. And I thought I was, until I realized reality. The law of the mirror tells me that I'm, I'm at that average. <laughs> average looking Filipino. Joseph was handsome. Put it for his wife, was, was beautiful and adorable. They could just have said, you know what, let's, let's, let's do this. Let's, let's find a room somewhere. Let's go. Let's go. Nobody's seen. You know? let's, 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 let's go. Let's go. Or let's, let's go to somewhere else. But Joseph did not. It implies that, you know, when you open your internet or you, and there is something that pops out that, wow, adorable uh, figure and uh, scantily clad objects are female. What I do is... <laughs> I don't even go there. Close. Flee immorality. Flee, flee the temptations, the presence of, of temptations, just like Joseph. Because when we are betrayed, and if we stay in that environment where we feel that we are, that we will be compromised, that we will be really compromised. Flee the presence of immorality. Joseph. Later on became successful because he was faithful to his God. 
The second story that I like to tell you is about the story of Daniel. It's very, it's very familiar, but Daniel was betrayed by those people, his colleagues, those people who works with him in the, in the kingdom. He was being, they couldn't find anything in Daniel chapter 6. They couldn't find anything to attack Daniel because Daniel was a blameless, God-fearing, scripture reading, and, and just a very kind, loving, and, and helpful uh, statesman. Daniel was just blameless. They had to find something to attack Daniel. And they found out, you know, let's require Daniel not to pray, uh, opening his window. And so they did, and, and Daniel was thrown into the uh, den of lions. You know the story. Daniel was preserved. Daniel became successful because he was faithful to his God. I want to be faithful to my God tonight, dearly beloved. As I immerse myself in the Gospel of Matthew, as I think of those people who, when good people are betrayed, yes, we need to understand that people of God will be betrayed just like Jesus Christ was betrayed. And our response will be how to respond to this aggression, provocation against our Christian, Christian faith and experience. And then Jesus, he was betrayed by Judas. He was about to be betrayed by Judas. Recently, I heard about this heartwarming story. Just, I just got this today. Uh, I want to share this with you. It's in the news. And I think uh, I, I would entitle this, When a Good Soldier Dies. I, you know, I'm a soldier of Christ. I believe I'm a soldier of Jesus Christ. I, I need to be, as a pastor, I need to be... Uh, Criticize, ostracize, uh, victimize, everything, uh, you know. That's, that's part, of, part of who we are as workers for the Lord. Am I welcoming it? I should not, but it's part and parcel of being a follower of Jesus, right? When a good soldier dies, do you think a soldier should not die? A soldier must die. That's, that's a given. But this story today that I found in the mm -hmm. news, I would like to share with you. It's a hard one. So um, just they today, in the news, I read about this sergeant <laughs> Dynas, and Dennis Weichel. He's 29 years old of uh, the Rhode Island National Guard. And I like just how they construct the story from the bad news of uh, what, are, what the American soldiers are do, doing in Afghanistan. He was stationed about a few weeks ago in Lagman province, eastern Afghanistan. And they were patrolling one day, as they were patrolling, you know, these uh, huge convoys of, of uh, Humvees and MRAPs, MRAPs, they call it the Mine Resistant uh, Armored uh, Protected Vehicle, MRAPs. And this sergeant, Dennis Weichel, he was just promoted uh, just recently, posthumously. He was just 29 year old, years old, and he, ha he has three children and his fiancé in their place. And this man, he saw, together with the other soldiers, some children were, were trying to pick up some uh, shell casings. You know how shell casings from the machine guns, bullets, you know how it is. They, he, he found out, they, they saw ahead of them in the convoys, that those children were picking up those shell casings, because in Afghanistan, those shell casings, you can sell, or you can recycle them, and you'll be given money or cash. So this was a very valuable uh, uh, thing for, for the children. So they would pick it up on the roads. And they, were, and they, they stopped first. They stopped. And, and on the wayside, they, they run to the children and let them get them out of the, of the road. As they were very successful together with the other soldiers. They were very successful in, 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 in getting out the children out of the, of, the, of the road because the convoys are just, uh, are just uh, barreling down the road because they, have, they, have to, they, they should not stop because if they stop, there will be uh, shooting ducks there among the uh, snipers and the, the, uh, the Afghan rebels or Al-Qaeda. And while they, while they were on the side, probably the, an, an Afghan girl darted towards some more casings on the road just to get just to get those casings and and sergeant Dennis Weichel found saw this and there was this uh, M, M, M raps they call it mine resistant armored 
uh, armored uh, protected vehicle, it, it weighs about 16 tons. It's a behemoth of a, of, a, of, a, of a truck. And it was barreling down, and he saw that the girl started, and he ran towards the girl and just get her out of the harm's way. But just in time, the MRAPs, or MRAPs, hit Sergeant Dennis Weichel, and he died of his injuries. He was a very good soldier, according to some of his colleagues. And, uh, and I, when I was reading this, I said, he was just good. Even if somebody has no shirt, he would take off his shirt and give it to somebody. If somebody, he wants to make everybody else happy, he was funny, he wants to make everybody smile, or happy, or crack jokes. But when he goes on patrol, he's a, he's a professional, he would do his business. And so, he gave his life for this young Afghan girl. And I was thinking, that's exactly the same thing that Jesus did. He was a good man. He was a good God. And he gave himself for somebody, for you and for me. Because we cannot do it. We cannot love our enemies. We cannot bless those who curse us. Never. We cannot do good to those who hate us. We cannot, we cannot pray for those who hate us or spitefully use us or persecute. We cannot. There is no way. Not a, not a zero. No way, Jose. It's only Jesus' example. And the Holy Spirit telling us, Jesus did this. If you follow Jesus, you can do this. In the story of Joseph, Daniel, and Jesus, I find three important words that probably may mean to us tonight. The first one is their being forthrightness. They are outspoken against the evils of their society. They were forthright. They were frank. They were direct. They were straight. Maybe Jesus did it in a, in a compassionate way. Joseph did it in a way that he knows how. Daniel did it in a way he, he knows how. But they were forthright. They, were, they, they, they have that acumen to say, this is not right. I will not do this. And this is evil. Called sin, but it's frightening. They have the, the forgiveness in their hearts. Joseph forgave his brothers who betrayed him. Daniel forgave those people, those colleagues of his who are, who, who are not esteeming him as one of their own. He's not one of their own, but he is one of the, of the officials in the government of Darius. But he forgave, he has this, this heart of forgiveness. And one thing I, I noticed among the three stories that I shared with you, they all have faithfulness. Jesus was faithful to his father. Joseph was faithful to his father. Daniel was faithful to his God the Father. When good people are betrayed, best example that we can follow is Jesus. And you have seen my life, friends. I'm, I would confess I'm far from Jesus. Jesus is the only example I mean. But one thing I know, Jesus sees my heart. He knew my heart. And He calls me by my name. And I call Him, Lord, You are my shepherd. I shall not want. You make me lie down in green pastures. You leave me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake, yet yeah, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even persecutions, killing, so help me God, or murders, or, or evil intentions of men, or betrayals of trust. Even though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear not. I will fear him, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anointed my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. 